Hi, I'm Tamara Novitovic, and this is SEO in 2024, Additional Insights. Tamara, what's your additional insight for SEO in 2024? It's uh, that you should ensure that you're actually building links for uh, users, humans, rather than algorithms and rankings. Okay, so how do you align your link building strategies with user needs in mind? So uh, you should always start with researching your audience and align with your marketing team because SEO and marketing uh, strategies should always go hand in hand. And uh, by this, I mean that you should conduct a thorough research of your audience, of their demographics, uh, needs, and uh, their behavior online, on your website, and on the web. And then according to this analytics, tailor the strategy that's the best for your users and not the search engine algorithms and uh, crawlers. Okay, so let's dive more into the specific user needs. So um, and what software do you use to begin with to identify that information that you're looking for about the user? Uh, the best one is definitely uh, Google Analytics and Google Search Console, which are the most accurate and uh, real-time information about user sessions and uh, behavior of your uh, visitors on your website, as well as the performance of the content and the external backlinks uh, that you have. So gathering all of this information and uh, comparing them and uh, maybe using some other external tools like Ahrefs, Samrush, uh, Majestic, Moz, uh, and using their own uh, traffic and organic keyword uh, metrics, then you are able to kind of analyze and feel uh, what your visitors need and what they're looking for on your website. Okay, and SEOs love metrics, and you can get lots of metrics doing that. But how do you map those metrics to specific user needs? And what would be a few examples of the more common user needs that you see? The thing that I like to do is to uh, gather uh, user feedback. Whether you are starting a new website or you are jumping onto a project to manage existing old domain it's good to gather user feedback and to actually measure the visit sessions and, uh, you know, average sessions and maybe bounce rate as well to see how your users react to your content. What I also like to do is to follow all the Google updates and make sure that the content aligns with the best practices. So, for example, if uh, we are about to uh, publish a cluster of articles and we are targeting specific audience. It's good to conduct uh, A-B testing as well to see how certain groups of users are reacting to one type of content versus the other type of content and then to uh, see the keyword intent and how users react to your content according to that. So uh, starting from basic analytical metrics and then conducting them and uh, tailoring the strategy into something that actually works. Okay, so do you actually start with some examples of user needs that you talk to your audience about or you simply let your audience tell you what their needs are and not presuppose what they are likely to be? So it's usually a mix of two. First, uh, of course, we, we like to measure uh, what the competitors are doing and how uh, their keywords are reacting to uh, users, how the users are seeing the keywords on the web and uh, actually using them for uh, any of the intent, whether it's uh, informational or commercial intent or what is your own intent with the content. And then we uh, compare this to actual behavior of the users on our pages. So you talk about the importance of having conversations with users. Are you talking about picking up the phone to them and actually having conversations with them? Are you talking about using software, using online survey, surveys, for instance? How, how do you go about doing that? So usually it's online surveys and gathering feedback by um, email or maybe putting some questions into a newsletter. 
So usually it's an online conversation rather than just uh, asking them in person. Any software that you recommend for that? Uh, so usually we, we use uh, our integrated CRM for this. And uh, from the recent experiences, it was more about customers and their links integrated and uh, users that converted to leads from the links. So we were tracking uh, the links through UTM uh, codes and then measuring the conversions that led to actual purchases or uh, registrations on the website or uh, filling out the contact forms. So we were tracking the path from uh, the link and clicking on the keywords to actual intent and how users were feeling about it and uh, how quickly this happened or if they're bounced back uh, from the page. And using, using uh, Google Analytics for this, uh, for tracking the UTM, uh, because it, it's only available to do it through Google Analytics, and then uh, later on uh, tracking from uh, Google Search Console. Okay, so you're liking using GA4? Uh, so far, yes. <laughs> so, and I like the fact that you talked about using your CRM as well uh, to, to track data, because that probably gives a greater likelihood that other marketing teams in our organization are going to use the same data as well? Do you find yourself having conversations with other marketing teams about the user and about what the user wants? So actually, no. Uh, everything that we do is internal because in, in my company, I am the, the only person that does data analytics about users. And uh, the type of SEO work that we do is mostly off-page. So every project that we manage is different and depends on uh, what the client's uh, marketing team is doing. So it's, it's usually uh, the type of information and data that I get is probably third hand. Uh, and from there, I get to analyze and uh, compare to uh, the beginning of the strategy. Okay, so that's looking at the user and what the user wants, but you also talk about evading spam risks during core updates. So what spam risks are you talking about? And can you give me an example of a core update that's made it more likely for a site to be flagged as a, as a spammer? So uh, we, we've seen a lot of this manual penalty activities in the March uh, 2024. Uh, there were three major uh, steps in this core update. There were a lot of activities around uh, manual penalties, which means that not only the spam brain algorithm analyzed the pages, but also there were uh, people uh, from Google team that actually went through the pages and evaluated uh, that they were not following the gui uh, Google guidelines and uh, that they were using manipulative and spammy techniques. So this involves manipulating by keywords, overstuffing the keywords in the content and trying to kind of uh, build up the points for uh, ranking signals which is something that you shouldn't do because uh, your content and backlink should be tailored to the user and providing the most valuable information they can uh, quickly get and maybe continue their journey uh, clicking on the backlink to the client's website or staying on the page as long as necessary to, to convert. So by avoiding uh, these spammy techniques, it's more likely that your website will uh, stay uh, ranking for a longer time without any additional efforts. So this means that uh, building evergreen content that's uh, tailored for the user, not for the algorithm, uh, means that you're going to avoid manual penalties or uh, algorithm penalties. Not for the algorithm at all? I mean, should you just target your link building strategies at driving traffic now? Yes, so uh, it's it's kind of a mix up of algorithm and uh, users. But uh, when we look back at Google uh, guidelines and and Webmaster guidelines, everything is uh, user centric, and the attention is turned uh, towards the user. So uh, from content to backlink structure, it shouldn't be manipulative, and it shouldn't feel uh, plastic or artificial 
to to the extent that that you get penalized. But of course, we we SEO exists because of algorithms and rankings. So we should take into consideration algorithms, but uh, we should also remember that al- algorithms uh, exist to uh, serve the users and visitors on Google. So kind of circles back to users again. Understood. So essentially, every link building tactic should have the user sniff test. Yes, of course. Unfortunately, it was not the practice in the last seven or eight years. We see that a uh, majority of the web is stuffed with guest posting websites and websites that, that were made purely for uh, link building purposes and, uh, um, you know, building pages and pages, endless amount of content. Uh, for no reason at all. And actually, I I really can't remember the last time I read an article about something that I want to quickly find on Google uh, that didn't feel a fake or uh, written by AI or just overloaded content writer. So has that driven you to another search engine? Are you still using Google primarily as your main search platform? I still use Google because uh, most information are gathered on Google. It has the biggest coverage. And I don't, uh, I don't feel like other search engines uh, have developed uh, an algorithm good enough to provide accurate information. And from my experience, I uh, didn't see a lot of accurate and uh, real-time information on other search engines. Uh, it's usually giving old, outdated Uh, stuff. So I still stick to Google. So you talked about um, old fashioned link building strategies. When you look at competitors or other websites out there, what mistakes, uh, apart from maybe just guest posting, do you find that they're making with their link building strategies? I would say a lack of relevancy. Uh, which is also uh, going back to user experience and having your links uh, exist and live uh, in healthy and relevant relationships with other websites. So building a link and publishing a page uh, just for the sake of uh, having the link is not uh, proven good anymore. And it can actually get a big penalty from Google. As we saw from some examples. So I would say that focusing on a website category and topic is a very good way to avoid these uh, penalties. Even if you are uh, still building links or purchasing links and using it for your strategy, uh, it's the best way to stay low and uh, to have a sustainable link portfolio uh, by building to relevant websites. So what metrics do you use to track user-focused link building strategies? So uh, organic traffic is the best one. Something that I like to start just by looking how healthy the traffic is and if the users are uh, finding this website as popular and trendy, if they are visiting uh, it uh, continuously. And I like to look at the last 12 to 18 months uh, in the past and see the traffic trend. What I also like to do is look at the uh, keyword uh, portfolio of the website, the keyword anchor cloud, because I want to see if the website is actually ranking for the topics and the keywords that uh, it's supposed to rank for. If I see something that uh, it's a bit off and uh, it, it, it seems like it's been built for other topics or topics that are not a good fit for the website, I would suspect that something uh, fishy is going on and that uh, it would not be a good neighborhood for my link. And of course, regarding the keywords, I would look at the search intent of the keywords in the articles. For example, if the website is publishing informational content, if it's a blog, if I find a lot of commercial or Uh, call to action uh, anchors, I would suspect that uh, this website is probably building uh, links uh, for money or uh, that it manipulates the content uh, in some way. Why do you use the traffic trend over 12 to 18 months? 
because from uh, previous researches, it showed that kind of a year or a year, year and a half of uh, the traffic journey. Maybe uh, from looking back at this uh, trend, uh, maybe you can see or uh, predict how the traffic will look like in the next three or six months. So then you can know if there are big spikes or drops in, in this period of time. You can suspect that this domain is not stable enough. You wouldn't be sure uh, about its health and its future uh, health of traffic. But if you look uh, too far in the past, if you look three years back, uh, I don't think it's proving enough because it's too big of a gap in time. Because, you know, SEO can change within a few days. Uh, the penalties can happen and uh, the traffic can drop in 90, 95% within a few days. So uh, looking back three years or two, two, two or three years or more is not that irrelevant, but looking back a year, year and a half and seeing the journey of, of the traffic can show a lot about the website. So you shared what SEO should be doing in 2024. Now let's talk about what SEO shouldn't be doing. So what's something that's seductive in terms of time, but ultimately counterproductive? What's something that SEO shouldn't be doing in 2024? I believe they, they shouldn't uh, focus on automated stuff, uh, again, uh, because everything is user-centric and focused on real human beings. So automating a lot of stuff uh, has proven in many ways, especially since the March core update, that uh, it's not efficient, or at least it's not efficient in the long term. And uh, also obsessing with uh, vanity metrics is not trendy anymore. So I politely ask my colleagues uh, from the SEO world to just focus on users and uh, real uh, live traffic rather than domain authorities and rankings. Great advice. Tamara Novitovic is head of SEO at Bazoom Group and you can find her over at bazoom.com. Tamara, thanks so much for adding your additional insight to SEO in 2024. Thank you, David. It was a pleasure. I've been your host, David Bain. You've been listening to an episode of SEO in 2024, Additional Insights, a majestic series that complements the original SEO in 2024 podcast, video series, and book. Find out more at seoin2024.com. SEO in 2024.